So in my five Python libraries video, I have gotten this one question with disproportionate regularity. It goes something like this. Why don't you just use the at cache or at LRU cache decorator from Funk Tools, or why don't you use cache tools? Aren't they all just the same as Redis simple cache? What's the distinction here? The answer to this question is that they're actually not all the same as Redis simple cache, and I'm gonna show why in this video. So first up, LRU cache and the regular cache decorator. If you go to the code for Funk Tools, you'll see that the cache here is just a dictionary. And the actual wrapper just sets the key for the dictionary after running the function. Something similar is also true for the base cache class of cache tools, where the decorator is just setting the output of a function to a key in what looks like a dictionary. And if we follow the definition of that, it's implemented very similar to a dictionary. Both of these have something in common. This dictionary is tied to the memory of the process that you're currently running. Redis simple cache does not have this limitation. This should be obvious by the name and the fact that this is backed by the Redis database, but if we go to the Redis simple cache code and look at the store function, we'll see that the data is not really being saved in a dictionary. Instead, it's being scheduled to be stored in a database using this set or set X operator, whereas set X is to give you TTL cache, uh, one that has an expiry. A quick note here, there is now a Python 3 package for Redis Simple Cache under a different name and PyPI. There's actually two of them, and I will link them in the description so you have something to install easily. So as is normal with this channel, let's do a quick demonstration. I have set up some code where I'm importing pandas and LRU cache and the cache decorator from Redis, and I have set up this read data function, which is just a wrapper for pandas.readcsv. And normally, of course, you would just put the decorators above the function. I'm not going to use that pattern. I'm instead going to use them how I'm showing them here so I can keep these two handles, one for the LRU cache function and one for the Redis cache function. And then the rest of the code is just set up to do timing, on loading this file both the first time and the second time, both with LRU cache as well as Redis cache. If we run this script the first time, for LRU, the very first run will take about six and a half seconds, and the second run will take almost no time because it's just a retrieval from a dictionary. The Redis simple cache run, on the other hand, takes six seconds for the first one and then 1.3 seconds for the second one. And you might be sitting there thinking, uh, then why would I want to use that? It's slower. Well, the reasoning for that is it's going to persist across processes. So the second time I run this script, the LRU cache version is still taking six seconds, but the Redis cache version is consistently now taking 1.3 or so seconds for every single run. You can even run the Redis CLI and look through the keys in the database, and you'll see the keys for the return values that are being stored there. Point here being that these decorators serve very different purposes. The Redis cache is specifically necessary for those situations where you want some values to persist across executions of your script. Whereas the regular cache decorators, the Funk Tool cache decorators, are really useful for when you need the cache to be tied to the current process, which is very often the case. So they're both very useful, just in different scenarios. Hope this video was useful to you in all scenarios. Like, subscribe, do your thing, and until next time, bye.